Well, hello. Welcome to First Federated Church. However you got here, if you found us on our Facebook live stream or are watching us on the First Federated Church YouTube channel or on WFMJ.com, you are most welcome to be with us today. We had such a great time last week with the music. And if you've um, just tuned in to us for the first time today, I suggest you get back out there on the interwebs when this service is over and find us on a YouTube channel and go look at the uh, High Five July service and just enjoy it. Just a great morning of, of music. We're having good music again today, but we're also doing something special today. We are having communion. And if you've never participated in a communion, we'll be explaining that a little bit later on in our service. But I just want to give you a heads up so that everybody at home, you can gather around uh, something that can be a bread product and uh, something to drink. So it could be juice, it could be water, it could be soda, whatever uh, you want to drink to make part of uh, your communion ceremony that you can follow along with us at home. Well, we're going to have just a word of prayer to invite the Holy Spirit to be with us. And uh, we're going to start that singing I was talking about. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this opportunity to be together, even though we're not necessarily physically in the same room. We ask that your Holy Spirit would come into all the spaces of our lives, be in our hearts and in our minds, so that as we go about our week, we will share the love that is Jesus Christ. We ask this in his name. Amen.
In our time of prayer, we have some uh, happy news that Phyllis is now home from the hospital and continuing uh, her rehab at home. And so she is just thrilled to be home and, uh, and re recovering well. And we uh, pray that uh, her rehab just keeps on progressing uh, the way that she hopes it will. You probably have things that are on your hearts and minds, and I invite you to ponder those as I lead us in prayer and that you will talk to God and ask for guidance on how you should proceed with mm -hmm. the things that might be troubling you. And if you are joyful of something in your life, you should express that also. And you don't uh, ever want to keep joy to yourself. You certainly want to share that. And for all the things we come to God asking about, it is nice to know that there are those times that we indeed can express our thanks also. With all these things, let us pray. Loving God, you created life in us and all around us. And even in the midst of this COVID pandemic, we see your rhythm of life with crops growing in the fields and the many different species of animals that are raising a new generation. Open us to receive your gift, the gifts of your world and your word. Encourage us to experience your world and word in such a way that we might not be just hearers, but also doers of your word. We pray for our friends who are seeking your healing touch, your comfort, your encouragement. And we ask in whatever ways that we are able that we would extend to these friends the help that we can give them on their path. And so we pray for Monica and her family and for Clark and Dewey, Josh, Megan, and her grandmother, Susan. We pray for Ralph and Chuck and Helen, for Donna and Gay and Sally and Gracie, for Bill and Shirley and Beverly Clayton, as we pray that he will grow stronger by the day, and Melinda, as she continues her recovery from COVID, and Bob, and Phyllis, and Bonnie, and Sarah, for Mike, and Aaron, and Shauna, for Cheryl, and Cole, for Dominic, and Bonnie, and Helen, and for people that we know that are struggling with this pandemic because we are required to keep a certain distance from one another and the strains that that physical distance and, in fact, isolation can cause. So we pray for all the, the mental stress 
that people have been under and that all of us will find healthy ways to cope. We ask for forgiveness for those times when we act as if your gifts are meant for us alone. Help us to see the design of your desire for us to be in harmony with nature and every person on this planet. Show us how to overcome the voices that speak words of fear, division, and scarcity with words and actions of justice, love, and kindness. Gracious God, cultivate the soil of our hearts to receive your word and nurture us so that your word grows deep, healthy roots within us. Let us not be distracted by the lure of wealth or the cares of the world. Make us good soil, receiving your word, understanding it, and acting on it to make your creation more like heaven on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let us share together the words of the Lord's Prayer as found in the book of Matthew. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial but rescue us from the evil one. Amen.
Like the sound of a symphony to my ears It's like holy water, your forgiveness It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips Like the sound of a symphony to my ears It's like holy water on my skin It's like holy water on my skin It's like holy That was terrific, thank you. And we're gonna talk about needing some of that uh, holy water. This is from the message interpretation of the Bible. It's in Matthew chapter 13. And it's commonly called the parable of the sower. So since we're in this uh, season of people tending their gardens, it makes quite a bit of sense for this time of year. So it goes like this. At about that same time, Jesus left the house and sat on the beach. In no time at all, a crowd gathered along the shoreline, forcing him to get into a boat. Using the boat as a pulpit, he addressed his congregation telling stories. What do you make of this? A farmer planted seed. As he scattered the seed, some of it fell on the road and birds ate it. Some fell in the gravel. It sprouted quickly but didn't put down roots. So when the sun came up, it withered just as quickly. Some fell in the weeds. As it came up, it was strangled by the weeds. Some fell on good earth and produced a harvest beyond his wildest dreams. Are you listening to this? Really listening? Study this story of the farmer planting seed. When anyone hears news of the kingdom and doesn't take it in, it just remains on the surface, and so the evil one comes along and plucks it right out of that person's heart. This is the seed that the farmer scatters on the road. The seed cast into gravel. This is the person who hears and instantly responds with enthusiasm, but there is no soil of character, and so when the emotions wear off and some difficulty arrives, there is nothing to show for it. The seed cast into weeds is a person who hears the kingdom news, but weeds of worry and illusions about getting more and wanting everything under the sun strangle what was heard, and nothing comes of it. The seed cast on good earth is the person who hears and takes in the news and then produces a harvest beyond his wildest dreams. It's easy to get a, a bit turned around in this parable. Um, another version of the Bible says, let anyone with ears listen. The parable of the sower ranks right up there in popularity of Jesus' teachings. Of course, we assume ourselves to be the rich soil that yields a bountiful harvest. No way do we consider ourselves the thorny or rocky ground. I mean, he wants to be associated with anything that doesn't reflect our best effort. Because the illustration quickly describes how the seed is either eaten by birds or withers in the heat, we might switch to hearing ourselves as the seed. You know, is this a story about our faith and we're supposed to be a reliable source of spiritual food for the world? If we're not carefully listening, we might even confuse ourselves as the sower. 
carelessly tossing a limited supply of seed around. I mean, even a city person must surely know that seed tossed on a sidewalk isn't going to sprout. It doesn't stand a chance. The people who heard Jesus tell this story in person, many of them lived their lives closer to the earth than most of us do nowadays. I mean, who knows how many were farmers? And even the town folk would have tended a plot of garden out of necessity. Did they have the ears to listen? Even if the soil was properly prepared, the farmer still has to rely on the right amount of rain and sunshine to have a successful harvest. Too much of either one, and it could be devastating. Drown or drought. Our cold, wet spring has given way to this week's scorching heat wave. Farmers roll that dice every year and pray they don't crap out. What kind of gamblers are we? On what are we willing to take a chance? Are you uh, digging up dirt or are you becoming a garden? Some of the pictures you see going across your screen there are from some members of our congregation. We've got some remarkable gardeners out there. I mean, some of you guys, uh, you know, planting's worthy of, I'm going to say, your own YouTube show. And, you know, Lake, I got to ask you, how do you get that amazing looking garden that you have every year? I mean, how much time do you put into that thing? A uh, couple, couple minutes of plowing, but mostly it's uh, my wife does some really wonderful planning. She has her ducks in a row, and by ducks I mean all of her, all of her garlic and all of her everything else for that matter. She, she really plans it out and makes it really concise, and I just follow a nice, easy-to-read description of what it looks like and do as I'm told. <laughs> That is really good. Do what you're told. Yep. Okay, that's pretty good <laughs> advice. So, and obviously, um, I mean, you must go out there. You must throw some sort of secret sauce on it or something like that, though, right? We, we blend in a little fertilizer at the beginning of the year. And then past that, we just make sure it gets watered. This year, we've been really blessed. It's been really beautiful weather for growing a garden. Yeah. We hardly seemed like it needed to try, but it yeah. made up for last year. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, you have more patience than I do because I, I like to walk into a place and it's there, ready to go. Yeah. The soil where the birds gobble up the seed because there's nowhere for it to sprout are the people whose hearts are hard and their ears are closed to why they should wear a, a face mask or why Black Lives Matter. And they confuse their constitutional right to be stupid with my right to be reasonably protected from their stupidity and others from their bigotry. The shallow soil that sprouts a plant with no deep support are the people who have done no kind of preparation in life. Oh sure, they'll read most of an article online but how critically do they consider the issues of our day? They make and share social media posts to express their indignation about whatever it is, but do they take concrete steps to address injustice? The seed that manages to sprout in the thorns and the Weeds, it, it finds itself crowded out by all the other things growing there. I mean, gosh, we, you know, we, we got to save for retirement and there's medical bills and the kids need this or that and how are we going to pay for school? I can't be seen driving a car of that color anymore. 
And look at how much fun those people are having on their vacation in the commercial. And they're so beautiful and young. I want that. What money is left over to share? And don't we need to protect our hearts for the winter of our lives? I mean, does this soil metaphor never quit growing? Does our dread of winter bury the hope and promise of the spring to follow? And consider that winter rye is planted to serve as nourishment for the next crop. The heart that is taken into seeds of love and wisdom planted there is soil that can support and nurture faith throughout every season. And even when the floodgates of life just burst open that threaten to drown us or in the darkest days of coldness and loss, the heart that knows extravagant love remains reliable soil. The 19th century playwright Oscar Wilde, you won't hear him quoted in just any church, he said, where there is no extravagance, there is no love. And where there is no love, there is no understanding. That people with the heart and hearts lack love because they don't yet understand. God sows the seed there anyway. The people who live lives of only chasing after the latest fad lack depth because they don't yet understand. God sows the seed there anyway. The people who find themselves choked out by all the cares of the world don't lack the capacity to love, but they find themselves struggling against contemporary expectations. God sows the seed there anyway. In this season of COVID-19, do you consider giving to the church, for example, a gamble? Do you think something else is a better bet? You will share your money and time based upon what kind of soil you are. All of us will share our love or not based upon our understanding no matter how much we have, it is no risk to share it extravagantly. In every season of our lives, Jesus wants us to prepare the soil of our hearts for a harvest that will satisfy every hunger. Amen. Tomorrow, there's also the 4-H Livestock Auction. A Valley Church is planning on bidding high so that they can make a big donation to a local food pantry. Caroline Collins has more on their challenge for others to follow suit. Well, I can help. Thursday evening at the Canfield Fair means it's time for the 4-H Junior Auctions. For the 10th year in a row, First Federated Church in North Jackson plans to donate a pig to a local food pantry. This year, the rescue mission will benefit. Because it really is a win-win for the 4-H member and for the charity that it goes to. Pastor Jack Ackery says the church typically spends about a thousand bucks on the pig at the auction. It's then processed and the meat is donated. He's calling on all churches in the valley to do the same. We just are challenging everybody to get out there, bring home the bacon, get to the auction, buy a 4-H project, and donate to either the Rescue Mission or Second Harvest Food Bank. The Rescue Mission says they're used to receiving donations like this, but it's the in-kind donations like one of these hogs that's really going to make a difference. 
when we have donations like this that are um, really just extra special kinds of cuts of meat, it really just adds some variety to our menu and gives our clients just a little something extra that, you know, we just wouldn't on our own do. The rescue mission serves up more than 300 meals a day. Vice President of Development Lynn Wyant says every donation made throughout the year helps, and one like this one sure stands out. And we are solely funded by the community, and that means the love and the care that we get from people who donate time, who donate their funds, who donate, you know, things that are strange and, and uncommon, like, you know, like animals that are going to be butchered that we can use to feed the people that are staying with us. It does warm our heart. With more local news, I'm Caroline Collin. Well, that was a little trip down memory lane for us. That was a couple of years ago. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to do the same thing again because the need is still there, whether through Second Harvest or the rescue mission. Uh, there are still people to feed. And uh, I know it's, it was in the news this week that the fair, as we have always known it, uh, it's not going to be like we've always known it, but there were still before age projects. And so um, your continued support of our food pantry will enable us to make another purchase and donate it uh, to folks that make sure it gets to where it needs to go. So we talk about sacrifice and it is a sacrifice when you give to our church, however it is that you give. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice in the totality of the way that he lived his life and even to his last day, still teaching his disciples about what it means to live that life of sacrifice. My friend and mentor, Jim Painting, when he has done communion, standing in this very spot before, to keep up the gardening metaphor, he has said, we're all just weeds. Some of us maybe are pretty wildflowers. Some of us might be thorny bushes. But yeah, we're just weeds. And God finds a way for us to fulfill the purpose that God has for us. So as we come to this moment, when we think about the life sacrifice of Jesus Christ, let us consider what we can do to live our lives a bit more like Jesus every day. And what a remarkable world it could be if we would see the beauty in the weeds. So I hope you have your whatever you want to stand in for bread. Any kind of bread product will do. It could be pretzels, it could be potato chips, it could be any variety of bread, your juice or water or pop, whatever it is you're going to drink. We are going to bless these things. It is not the element that makes it holy. It is God's action in your life that makes it holy. So we hear these words from Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians. He said, on a night that our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over to be killed, he took bread and he gave thanks for it and blessed it and he broke it, and he passed it around to his disciples, and he said, this bread represents my body, which is being broken for you. Every time that you eat of this bread, remember me. And in the same way, after the meal, he took the cup and he poured the wine, 
And he said, this cup represents a new covenant with God that begins with my blood sacrifice. Every time that you drink of this cup, remember me. And so Paul tells us that every time that we eat of this bread and we drink of this wine, you are telling others about the Lord until he comes again. Let us pray. God, our creator, we give thanks that you created this world and that you brought humanity into being, that you have breathed your very life into us. And help us to understand that every person we meet, you are reflected in their image. We thank you for the promises you brought us through Jesus Christ. You taught us that we can serve you and how to honor you and each other so that we can be in closer relationship with you. The death and resurrection of Jesus Christ taught us that nothing, not even death, can separate us from you. We humbly ask, you to send the power of your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine that we may know the presence of the living Christ and be one body together, cleansed by his sacrifice and faithfully serve your creation. With Jesus and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This is the bread of life. Take and eat. The blood of Christ is a cup of blessing that has been poured out for all of us. Take and drink. Let us pray again. Gracious God, we thank you that you've helped us to remember this last supper of Jesus. And we thank you for all the ways that you nourish us. Make us fertile soil. And let your spirit grow in us so that we may create a harvest that fills the hunger of the people who are looking for your direction. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You don't have to be here in person to support the great things going on at First Federated Church. Go to our website at firstfederatedchurch.net and click on the Give Now tab up in the right-hand corner or use your smartphone with the Give Plus mobile app. You can support us from wherever you are, firstfederatedchurch.net or the Give Plus mobile app. Well, let's offer uh, a prayer over the gifts that you so graciously bring to God. Let's pray. 
Holy One, we ask that you take these offerings and plant them in the good soil that you've prepared. And let this money grow into whatever you need it to grow into. And let the things that we do bring the hope of Jesus to a hungry world. This we ask in his name. Amen. the promise of a bunch of summer yet to go. So keep on tending your gardens. And I hope that you are indeed making yourself really good soil and not just digging up dirt. So that you can be for the world, the body of Christ, reaching out, welcoming all, and growing together in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Nothing.